everybody, I'm Rachel. And I'm Steven. <laughs> and we're the Faint Divinities, a channel here on Twitch and YouTube. We have a Discord, a Twitter, we have everything. Uh, come find us wherever we are. Uh, and we are specifically dedicated as a channel to playing and talking about Daggerheart, which is the new tabletop RPG system from the Darrington Press and Critical Role groups that is currently in open beta. And we come to you again because another month has gone by and another thing has happened. We are no longer in open beta version 1.3. We are now in open beta 1.4 as of today. Now, Stephen, again, you as just an adult, you were at work today, so. Well, I was, I was there. Yeah. I'm very uh, uh, straight from work vibe right now. You're, yeah, you look dapper again. I love Oh, this. yes. Yeah, yeah it fantastic. seems like a GM talk is what's happening now. I'm just going to be dapper for all of our GM talks. I love that. I think that's fantastic. <laughs> that's amazing. Um, all right. So now, how much do you know about what has shifted? Can you give me an idea? Um, I mean, I, I actually am just discovering. So I read over um, the first universal changes mm -hmm. and then work took me away. Oh. So, um, okay. I, I really did not get into it at all. Okay. Uh, yeah. So well, I'm so excited to hear some things. Oh. I've been, re I've been reading in the last 30 minutes, but, uh, yeah. Don't... We've also been talking. We have, we have been talking as well. So, um, all right. And so I do want to note we are, and by the way, Steven, if you want to post into the discord that we're live, that might be helpful, you know? Um, oh, but yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, uh, but anyway, so fortunately for you, I have taken a ton of notes. I have all kinds of stuff. I do also have a cat. Somebody has been asking me to put a cat cam up, but I just can't do it, guys. I'm the star of this show. Um, <laughs> no. but, uh, but it was a beautiful event. We've done this twice now so it came as no surprise except that I I just continue to be surprised at how on the money they are as a group it's kind of insane to me that I thought maybe it was a fluke when a one month in they released a new version but we are one month after at this point and here's the next version they are just staying on top of this are we going to get another version until it's done every month? Is that what we're getting? I mean, it almost seems like we're getting that treat. Um, I, I, you know, two months in at three, I'll be ready to put some money down. <laughs> I just, I just don't, I really, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm so interested to see what happens. I am very, uh, I, I'm excited. I can't believe how fast they are. And if you do go back and watch the stream, you're going to hear that. So you know that I've been pretty excited about their next version. Uh, sorry, not their next version, their next adventure that's coming out because it's levels two oh, yeah. and four. Um, and I forget the name right off the top of my head. I think it's Marauders of Windfall, if I'm right. I'm so excited about it, but it did not drop today. So for those of you who are looking for that, it's not here yet. That's okay. If you're watching our game, it gives us more time for ribbit shenanigans. Kayla, don't you worry. Um, but uh, Spencer Stark, during the call, was like, hey guys, here I am and right after this I'm gonna go right back into talking about that adventure so he's still building that out now you know like they are all working together it's it's just it's wild to me how industrious they are I said it in the first time I say it again they're just industrious it's kind of crazy um, so I don't want to spend a lot of time on this but let's go ahead and just dive into the item. So first, again, if this is hell, yeah, Kayla says, absolutely. So we're going to dive right into stuff. If you, we're going to do this again, because I do understand some people weren't here when 1.2 went to 1.3. So let's talk about how you know what has shifted just in case you're one of those folks. So remember, I have Daggerheart up on the screen right now. And if you go to daggerheart.com, there is the ability. I hope that there is nothing in there. I'm going to have to double check. If you go to daggerheart.com, you do have the ability to play Daggerheart. 
if you click into this area it does and it is it does this to me all the time I think it's fine you have to scroll up it wants you to submit your email for download if you want the download of all the materials and you do please do this um, note you're gonna have to enter your email it's gonna perform the download for you one thing to be aware of and give me just a second I've noticed that my music is gone um, there it's back so when you initiate the download this time the first thing that you're going to notice off rip is that there is a download for players and a download for gms i kind of wish that they would combine it all back in together because i don't want to click multiple things um as especially because of a little note uh which is that we were seeing some discrepancies earlier today in some of the Darrington chat areas around like versioning details that were updated in some places and not updated in others. <laughs> Thank you, mandatory fun time. Yeah. I do look good right now. Look good right now. <laughs> like, hi, mandatory fun time. It's uh, great to see you. Yeah. So <laughs> moving on past how handsome Steven is, because he does look, he looks fantastic. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Guys. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there were ghost revisions happening throughout the day. So in wow. point of fact, I don't know if I have the latest versions. Uh, Steven just downloaded them. Yeah. So he does. About 30 minutes ago. Yeah. So uh, unless they've changed something since then. <sighs> I'm not gonna put it past them. I'm not gonna put it past them. These people are wild. I don't know. Um, but uh, but anyway, it's possible, and that brings me back to my point. I would rather it have one package: the GM stuff, yeah. the player stuff. But you enter your email, you're gonna get everything that way. If you just want the the cliff notes, though, scroll up. I've said this before. You gotta scroll up, and then you're gonna see the surveys that we've talked about a lot. But here is your change log. And here is where we're going to dive in. I do want to note because I didn't give all of this detail the first time we talked about it. The change log is in a lot of places. It's here. If you download it, it's at the top of the manuscript. Also, yeah. moving over here into the Daggerheart Nexus in Demiplane. They have it here too. They have the change log right there in the playtest information. So they are doing such a good job of putting everything everywhere. Um, they want everyone to be, they want it to be very accessible. They which, do. And they're succeeding currently. They're, yeah, they're doing so well. It's so crazy to me. Also, really good job. This time, I don't know if it was this case last time, but this time GM instructions was all caps. And you remember in version 1.3 when it was released, it was GM instructions. I almost wonder if it was like kind of a wink to like, we got it, you know? I don't yeah. know. <laughs> I, could be, I could be crazy, but I, I knew that. I, I saw I that. I think that they, they hear that stuff. They're very oh. you know, active in their community. I, I mean, Spencer Stark was on Reddit today. Like, I, I, oh my God, Ivan Van Norman was in the, the, G, the chat today on Twitch. Oh my God, it was crazy. Darcy Ross was in there. It was wild. Um, all right, so let's talk about some of the actual changes. Man, yeah. this is gonna sound familiar for my players that are watching or will watch this later, because I'm not reiterating all of this a thousand times to you guys. A lot of this is gonna feel familiar. They really are working with a good version. We're down to the last few items, I feel like. Um, but I have some exciting stuff to talk about later. Don't you even worry about it. Um, <laughs> Let's talk about these universal changes, which is what we saw last time. Also, this is getting very long now, but note that at the bottom, you still see the 1.3 items. If you get to 1.3, stop scrolling. It doesn't matter anymore um, unless you're trying to, I don't know, make a log of all changes and they you don't like theirs. I don't know. But universal changes, universal changes, universal changes first general reorganizing clarified rules i don't know how helpful that is in places i think it's just a general item um the big one here we go all of my players advantage it's back baby it's back you can blame it all on it's 1.2 again um uh, you steven we have already talked a little bit about this we have we, we, <laughs> so we had a brief discussion before we started because this is one of the things i read and saw while i was at work i and I might be in the minority here. You're not. <laughs> oh yeah, not. Apparently they changed it back because of feedback that they got. Oh, I love it. I love the, the extra D6 or the negative D6. I was explaining to Rachel 
uh, you know, as a GM, giving someone disadvantage sometimes it's like, okay, you're gonna roll an extra dice and it might be bad. Um, but like giving someone a dice to roll and if it's really high, it sucks more is it's just it's a good ha <laughs> to your players. Not that you should be mean to your players. I love my players. But sometimes they're mean to you. And you gotta get back at them sometimes. <laughs> we at the Faint Divinities, we are totally against uh, G- player and GM hostility. Um, I want what? to get... Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're good stuff. I totally didn't just like scream at y'all in the last episode at all when y'all were being <laughs> raiding the ribbit friend. Um, <laughs> y'all deserved it. Anyway, um, so... Yeah, so to clarify, in case you weren't here for 1.2, advantage. In 1.3, no, I'm going to go back. Let's talk about 1.2. You have duality dice. I did it again. I don't have the duality dice. I got them. Okay. Right here. Now remember to be cautious. Thank you. Don't be rolling all crazy. I don't want those sounds this time. But you have have your duality dice. One represents (coughs) hope. One represents fear. You want them to be distinctive colors. And you roll them whenever you're trying to accomplish something. That is how it works in this game. In version 1.2, you rolled those dice. And if you had advantage, you roll a d6 in addition to that. There it is. <laughs> yeah, you're perfect. I dropped it. I dropped it. <laughs> you roll a D6. I was going to show all of them. <laughs> it's fine. You can grab it. It's right there, right? <laughs> it's there. It's there. It's there. Okay. You're good. Don't worry about so it. So you can roll a D6 <laughs> on top of it. Truly diabolical. Okay. And that D6 adds to your total score. It does not add to your hope. Okay. Which adds- I was wrong about. I think we were, we were talking about it briefly earlier, and I had thought that it did. Mm-hmm. It don't. still love my extra dice yes i love dice too <laughs> um disadvantage similarly you're gonna do the same thing you roll your duality dice you roll a d6 this time you subtract the value of the six it's it's sounding uh, it's crazy when i first heard it i thought it sounded crazy the more i do it it's just like <laughs> we all know how this works version 1.3 came around and they were like let's try something new now mm-hmm. you're gonna roll your duality dice and then you're gonna re-roll your hope die and pick the higher usually of the two disadvantage same you re-roll the hope die take the lower we're back to 1.2 we're back to the d6 system um there were a lot of reasons for it i I get it. I would love to hear the reasons because I I yeah. firmly thought that I would be on the minority you, here. You know what I'm a little bit upset about is that uh. I went into, I'm a very critical person. I, I'm very optimistic, but I am also very critical. But when people make well-reasoned arguments to me, I am very like, oh, well, oh, gosh. Receptive of it, yeah. I, I get it. <laughs> um, and unfortunately, I went into that stream having read a lot and being like, uh-uh, not this. Is, and then they gave me the reason and I was like, huh, you son of a... <laughs> like, they did it. They, they, they were right. I get what they're saying. So number one... It's less complex. It is. It's yeah. it's easier to understand. It's very different from like Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition, right? But it's easier to understand. Yeah. Number two, my criticism was, well, I think that a help action or an advantage should give you a bonus to the hope. And they refuted that in the dialogue. They said, the problem is, is the reports that we were getting was that hope was becoming a circle. It was becoming just a swinging door. You spent a hope to give yourself advantage. You absolutely got that back. So you just never ran out of hope. Nobody was mm-hmm. generating enough fear. And criticals went off the charts. And we have had a lot of criticals in our games. So when I was, you know, like... And again, y'all are going to hear this, but when I was flipping through the facts, I was like, they're right. They're right. It's wild, but those are very good reasons. Yeah. They had Aren't a better they? argument than me. Yeah. Was... Yeah. You're like, I like it. And they're like, hurt, well, we looked hurt, at the map. Hurt people. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're like, the numbers, you know? Um, yeah. No, they got it. I, I, I was, I was a little bit, I was hurt by it, but I do get it. I do get it. Mm-hmm. It's a good. Point. I was noticing that now that you mentioned it, I was actually noticing that in the last game was that I was like, oh man. I haven't really lost hope this game. Mm-mm. 
it's hard now because so many yeah. times even the help action right gives you advantage mm -hmm. well that's not a d6 yep. that's ho so i think it's gonna be good i think it's gonna be impactful i like it after everything but it was hard on me when i first heard about it i'm really having to come around to it i really liked yeah. it and it's it is i will say I think you're with the majority because they said that it was based on survey responses, but it's not mm. a clear majority because I'm in all of the Discord channels. Everywhere that mm. you're talking about Daggerheart, guys, I am in there somewhere, I promise you. <laughs> and people, it's a, it's an even split of people like, oh, man, no, and people like, yes. So it's interesting. Um, yeah. Okay. So – Action rolls, I don't think we need to talk about it. Not a whole lot, but they did, again, remember in 1.3, they added some clarification on this is going to be an action roll. This is, da, da, da. That's, that's added. That's just more clarification, more clarified text over rulings over rules, flaving your game, etc. Ooh, whoopsies. Went somewhere crazy. Give it just a second. I don't know. I don't know how I got here. Hmm. We're going to go back. Sorry, guys. Okay. So once we get out of those universal changes, everything gets a little bit, I like the way they broke this down, but at the same time, I think it's not organized by priority anymore. Now it's organized by what chapter it's impacting. I'm okay with this, but I, I you know, there's some of me that I want to kind of touch base on things that are bigger. So I'm kind of gonna disregard some of the change log in the way that it happens in this order. And I'm actually gonna go to my notes that I took during the call with Matt Mercer and Spencer Stark. The call, like we were just <laughs> friends chatting. Like it was just me, Rachel. I, I heard it, but I didn't wanna say anything because I was like, she's in it, she's Don't in worry. it. Don't worry, just like constantly hyper aware of who I, anyway. Um, so I, I'm gonna first talk about GM stuff, okay? I don't wanna spend a lot of time on this. I think Daggerheart is mostly for the players. Yeah, we were on teams together, mandatory. We were, we were just on a little team chat, you know what I mean? I was <laughs> highlighting stuff in the background for them, you know. Matt and Spencer, I don't know what they would do without me, you know? I'm yeah, just, yeah. I'm instrumental to the process. <laughs> um, so Glue that holds everything together. It's yeah. me, it's me, I'm fun glue. Um, so <laughs> there's a lot of love happening that's to, right. <laughs> that's exactly right. I'm pointing out those little things. I really am. I'm saying, are you sure about this advantage system? And they're like, Rachel, we've thought about it. <laughs> like, <laughs> all right, uh, moving on from my fun little joke time. Um, they are showing a lot of love to the GMs, okay? I want to spend more time on the players. Daggerheart, I truly think, is about the players. You know, that's your biggest base. That's most of the people that play your system are going to be players. That said, GMs, you know, we do a lot for you guys, and this is a lot of love for them. So first, in their in ancillary, which is still a hard word for me to say, ancillary documents, uh, which again, download everything, you will have access to this. They now do have that GM guide that they were talking about. It, it's helpful. I'm gonna have this up, okay? It has like the GM principles, the best practices, examples of GM moves. You know how in the last game, my brain was like, make a, oh, it's not charisma, what is it? Presence check? Right here, character traits, right off the uh, off rip. It's right there, so helpful, I love that, okay? Has the difficulty nice. scale, which is, I, I think for me, this wasn't something I necessarily need. Gonna be way, gonna be huge for people who haven't GM'd a lot in the past. Um, details on action tracker stuff. This is a great kind of overview. There are some things that I would like to see added in here, you know. Uh, I want to see conditions. I want to see a clarification on the money um, because we, in our sheets, we don't have it. I need to know coins, handfuls, because that's the stuff where I don't need to be flipping through a book. That's going to be some of my survey feedback. But, wow, what a great thing to have in here. Ayo, Squire, it's good to see you. We're talking this 1.4 update. Ayo! <sighs> We are uh, still sticking on that GM track, though. Fantastic. Any questions, anything mm -hmm. you want to see here, Stephen? Um, I've got to take a deep dive into that. I'm yeah. actually glad they added that in because... Yeah. Uh, digging through GM materials is always so... 
Remember to Difficult keep word. it flowing, keep it loud. Keep yeah, it yeah, yeah, yeah. There we are. Sorry. Yeah, S- yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. I, I, it's not me trying to be like, whoosh. it's just like no, his, his mic. My mic is fucked for some reason. Sorry for the language. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> sorry for the language. <laughs> like, we don't curse all the time. God, you know, anyway. I screamed it into it. I felt like. It's okay. It was very <laughs> aggressive, but it's a safe place. We talk safety tools all the time, but we are a uh-huh. safe place for cursing. Um, yeah, his microphone, he's got to be up because otherwise it just stops listening uh, to If it. I'm not here, it doesn't know where I am. Yeah. Okay. Other one. We had GM moves changes for my GMs. You got to know this one. It's great. I think this is the sweet spot. Version 1.2. Every time a player rolled fear, you were supposed to make something crazy happen and take a fear so you could use a gm move like oh my god the lightning crashes and it hits a tree now you gotta dodge plus here's a little fear token to use later version 1.3 they were like okay 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 that was overpowered we get it one or the other you take the token or lightning crashes tree falls and that was a little hard on me because it was kind of keeping me from doing things i think sometimes that were like I want to progress this in a negative way, but I need this fear token because I want to kick your booties soon. So I'm just going to take the fear token and it's fine that you rolled fear. Now I think this is the sweet spot. The new ruling is, in my understanding, remember this is all fresh, this is initial thoughts, but the new ruling is you are going to gain a fear and the scenario changes a little, but you're not going to make a full blown GM move, right? Not, Not one of those big items like activating an adversary or something. Um, If you choose to do that, you do not make a full-blown GM move. Or you can do a full-blown GM move and not keep the fear. I know that this is going to be a little bit hard for people who haven't been GMs yet to understand. For me, I've been running these games for, is it six weeks now? Seven weeks now? Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. Something it's like a, that. It's a lot. And um, this is huge. This is great. Yeah. I, I think this is the sweet spot, honestly. So, all right. Um, and then the last one is, I love this too. NPCs, helpful NPCs to your party. Again, I actually, you guys have all heard it here before. I think of Daggerheart as a mixed media, amalgus interchange of rubrics. And one of those things that you see in a lot of different games is NPCs that help the party, join the party, combat alongside the party. In D&D, it was my least favorite thing. Because that means I have to, let's say at level 12, right? Which is mid-tier. It's not even super high. If I want to bring an NPC that's helpful to you, I have to build a level 11 or 12 NPC, right? That takes a lot of time. It's a lot of energy. The picking the spells alone get, um, it was horrible. They are introducing new ways to get NPCs to have kind of like stat blocks. I didn't get the particulars on how they're doing this, but to more generalize NPCs into different types. That way they can help and immediately. Hi, Justin. It's so good to see you. I hope that work is going okay. Um, It makes me think for my GMs, it makes me kind of think of... Some of the enemies already have like these little qualifiers, like they might be kind of the gen- general kind of enemy that's part of a horde, and they're just kind of fodder for the for the murder engine. <laughs> I forgot about that sticker, Stephen. I love it. Anyway, um, you oh, have <laughs> my gnome. Yeah. yeah, you have like generals who do more. You have like bruisers. I think I can't remember all of the names, but they can each do different things. Now the NPCs are gonna do that so that your GM can kind of slide them in. And wow, they they're just. Somebody said it in the chat today. You can really tell that Darrington Press are gamers making games for gamers, and I truly feel that here. So. So amazing. Very, very into it. That is my GM corner. I'm not going to spend a lot of other time talking about GM stuff, but we haven't had a lot up to this point for GMs truly. um, And I thought it was great that they were showing them a little love. Um, And hopefully it'll make it easier for the, I I was going to say next generation. That's not what it is. The next iteration of GMs stepping into the hot seat to help. Because y'all know that Justin, you, Steven, you, 
yes, I took the first reins, but y'all are going to be leading us at higher levels. So mm -hmm. things get hairier. Whoop, whoop. A whoop, whoop. Yeah, a whoop. Um, okay, any questions on that, Stephen, that you had? Uh, I... No, not truly. Not right now. I am going to look into that a little bit more. Um, I think that's genius oh, yeah. to add something to just like help GMs have NPCs on like the fly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because it is, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. I, I love piloting an NPC occasionally, but sometimes you make an NPC and these players, they love them. And they just want them around all of the time your friend is in chat being wild again no kidding like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. i actually yeah. like that one take off the vest big boy is i like that not like that though <laughs> like, <laughs> never, <laughs> never like that <laughs> like, yeah but yeah it's an excellent point being the gm the more fun you want to introduce to your player table the more difficult your life becomes and that's you're never going to be able to remove that entirely you know if i want to give you anora our ribbit highborn bard a document that's made from or a letter a scroll from marlo fairwind i i gotta write something up you know yeah he only needs the tie listen chat is crazy if y'all want some stuff just now i'm kidding um <laughs> all right we're going to move on. We're going to talk about yes. ancestries. Yes. You saw this. I did, All I did, right. I did. So, this ancestries. This is so cool. You can introduce this one. I talk a lot, I but like, you know I, this one. Get I it. like this one a lot. Yeah. I, so, as we were starting off talking, I was reading through some of it. This idea of, like, now your ancestries. So, what they've done is they've given each ancestry two traits or two features. Mm -hmm. Um and now you are gonna be able to mix those features for mixed ancestry. So if you have a half dwarf, half giant, um, crazy combination, but it can exist in this you know, universe. You can He's just a regular sized person, a half dwarf, a half giant. He's yeah, just a yeah, regular, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, he's not I a human, it. but he's a, just a regular but, yeah. size. <laughs> and, and no one would be able to tell. <laughs> no one, no, yeah. Um, but yeah, and then you could take the dirt's feet from the giant. You could take the thick skin feet from the door. Um, yes. I love it. It's so smart to like be able to help players like really be able to create something unique to themselves. Yeah, yeah. It's it's so. Oh no, your friend is crazy. Like anyway. <laughs> like, so, <laughs> uh, first of all, Justin, you are getting. Yeah, that is. A, listen, Justin, I was thinking it. I'm glad you said it. Is that why Jimbo is so tall? I don't know if it was your mom or your mam or your dad, but it was one of them. <laughs> one of them was a giant. We'll have to figure that out. No, I don't think. <laughs> I know Thrain and oh man, I'm trying to remember Ma's name at this point. I know them both, but. Is that small, large person or a large, small person? Who can tell? <laughs> Who knows? Mm. Um, <laughs> by the way, though, Justin, your dwarf is about to get, ooh, scary. Increased fortitude gives you the halving of incoming damage. Now, you got a lot of, you spend a lot of hope, but that thick skin is here, too. So whenever you permanently increase your proficiency, also increase your minor threshold by the same amount. Um, That's wild. Wild. That's uh, wild. The, it, it, so that's this buff. That's scary. Uh, Ribbit, I don't think it's changed, Kayla, so you don't have to worry about that. Simia, uh, Simi oh, by the way, Steven, you know how you always say Simeon? I figured out a way for you to remember Simia. Are you ready? Do you know this? Okay. Do you know the song that's like shimmy, shimmy, ya, shimmy, yam, shimmy, yay? Yeah. Ready? Simmy, simmy, ya, simmy, yam, simmy, yay, simmy, simmy, ya. <laughs> Simi -ya. There you go. Simi -simi -ya. Uh, um, yeah. Anyway. Simia didn't change at all. It didn't change. Yeah. So a lot of these are the same. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Justin's minor is three now. We're going to talk mm. about those as well. <clears throat> By the way, Fungro got. I'm jealous. Fungro got. It's the coolest. How will I not be a fun girl in, the, in my characters? Because now you get the thing that I loved at first, which was the network. And uh -huh. you get the death connection. Oh. Uh, uh. Oh my gosh. Although it's a little bit different. Now you don't eat them as much as you're talking to them with Death Connection. Right. But every iteration of these little mushroom people, oh my God, they're incredible. I need more of the fun grills. Um, yeah. Also, I need more fun grill arts. I know they're in the manuscript, but I need more. I need so many more. Um, 
Okay, I did want to also show one more though. Oh, fairy. This is a good one. Um, this, when I hear from a lot of people, at first I was like, oh, I don't like it. And then I heard about it and I was like, oh, just kidding, I love it. Um, it's great. This fly ability. I remember Chris saying, because as you guys yeah. know, he plays Tankerbell, our fairy warrior of the brave. Um, and it felt weird that he, a fairy with wings, has to mark stress to fly at all. So mm -hmm. the white fire arcanist, a fairy who is a, like, I keep trying to say lightning bug because I am Southern Irish initially, but a firefly. Firefly is y'all's word for it. I'm so sorry. She's a firefly. She has a house in a tree that is like hoisted into the air she flies presumably every time she only has six stress every day but she spends two to get in and out of her house this is wild that's crazy yeah a little bit strange it's not that anymore now you just fly i love the way they said this it's just wings you can fly period yeah. they're brilliant i fucking love that um well <laughs> apologies for cursing no i never apologize anyway while flying, you're going to mark a stress before an adversary's attack roll to increase your evasion by plus two against that attack. Now, this says before an adversary's attack roll. I gotta be honest, I kind of want it to be a reaction, like in, you know, like wizards in <laughs> the cursing. It does make everything better. Hitman is the word that I don't say on this stream. Um, <laughs> I know what y'all do with that. Anyway. Um, uh, so I, I kind of wanted to act like the reaction spell, you know, where, what, mm -hmm. what is it called? Shield. Shield. Mm -hmm. I don't think it does though. Before an adversary's attack roll. Mm, yeah. I get it. But I, I mean, kind of, mm, I don't know. We might flavor it that way at, at table, you know? Mm. Anyway, they get luck bender too. That's your races. So, oh, sorry. Yeah. Your ancestries. Whew. Uh, you, you have a lot of those, but again, to really drill down deep uh, on this. Um, Steven made the great point that there are mixed ancestries. So you have two character trait characteristics, whatever, in the ancestries. If you want to say, I am a part fairy and part Katari, you get to mix and match. Um, some of the community super is super exciting. Yeah. Some of the community is already saying, Hey, we should identify one of these as the major and one of these as the minor so that you can't have two big ones. I say, let people go crazy. Yeah, for sure. No, I think that that's wild. Are you telling me that you would want to be like, Oh, okay. Well, because he's more human, he has a high stamina. Yeah. Like that seems silly to me. Yeah. You're, we're why y'all about... boring? Why y'all yeah, boring why, is my question. Talking about? That's have so time. silly. Stop yeah. It. Have a grand By the way, though, thing. Stephen, Chris today was like, maybe I'm a little bit of a monkey because he wants oh, to yeah. have that nimble evasion. Uh huh. Uh huh. You might be Ridge Bros and something else, but um. Yeah. Well, but yeah. we'll look at it because I had mentioned earlier that I kind of doubled up on the the, the agility stuff. You did. Yeah. Mm. Um. Okay, so, you know, I don't want to spend a ton of time into this, but guys, it's the same as before. Uh, go to the change log for, like, the iterative, mm -hmm. down deep list of things that have changed. And also the updated uh, kind of, there is a file inside of the package that's called, like, updated files only. It has everything that has changed and only what has changed. It's a great, great document. Um, but I do want to talk very briefly. Not all of the communities changed, which was great great because in 1.3 everything changed but uh i do want to talk because it impacts our group that wanderborn did change the nomadic pack is back <laughs> the nomadic pack is back i saw that i was yeah. you know woo! Woo! Um, yeah yeah I, think, so. I, I like the nomadic pack i think it's pretty cool the, the shifting wanderborn idea was cool as well i do I like that, that. Idea. <gasps> oh my god i have to talk about that but i'm going to trigger that conversation at the very tail end remind okay. me of chaos chaos okay i can remind you about chaos, chaos. Um, but yeah no i really like the, the the pack it like gives you something that is like very unique to your community Cause like that's that's what these are, and it's like the community of Wonderboard and like being able to like do a little bit of what everyone can do. Yeah, was so cool. The only thing, and I'm already getting into this, not getting into it. I don't want to say it that way, but I'm already having this dialogue with with some of my friends in Discord and stuff, which is like it says 
you pull out a common item. And initially I was like, oh, well, that means like, you know, you pull out a rope or you pull out, um, you know, a, a, a toothpick. But, you know, when you, the interesting thing is that when you look at the guide and you go into, oh, where are we? I don't remember. Um, I need to go into game rules and then I need to go into, oh man, you know what? I'm backwards right now. Suffice to say, items in this have different kind of groupings. One of them is common, and it's basically anything that you could roll from the table for up to a 24. Uh, minor health potions, minor stamina potions, those classify as common. So in the scenario Rhyme. that something came up, I think that is a common item. Maybe I need some clarification from Darrington, but I think that's the intent here. I don't know. Um... Oh, Justin says he saw that bit of the stream early. I saw, I saw that comment, and now I'm extra excited. Oh, it's gonna be so good. I, uh, I submitted another question today. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And then Richborn changed uh, again. Uh, <laughs> we still have advantage on on our traversals and things, but now we get an extra armor slot, which I do actually like. That that's pretty yeah. exciting. Yeah. Uh, extra excited, are you? <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> I always, when I don't know, like, what's going on, I feel like my eyebrows want to pretend that I'm in on the joke, and then I regret it immediately. No! <laughs> None of us were in on the joke. Um, like, so. Okay, very brief kind of moving some things along. Um, you know, evasion, most of it has stayed the same. In some areas, they've kept some things or they've changed some things. So, guardian, higher. Rogue, yeah. lower. Uh, Justin. Minor thresholds, not evasion. Aw, you know what Justin just said? No more Satanic uh, Panic 1.4 for Ridge Bros. Rest in peace. Oh, uh, yeah, that is rough. Yeah. Yeah, pour one out for the homies. Um, yeah, so the evasion, you know, the idea is that they're really trying, they're, they're in the final push. We've played this game. We've talked about this game. It already feels good. So the things they're tweaking now are just those little balance things, you know? And I'm interested to see how it plays because we have a rogue in the party. R.I.P. Satanic Panic. Kayla, you just know what it is. Um, but yeah, so that <laughs> also armor class, you know, some of the armor class details seem to have shifted a little bit a lot of the y'all are gonna have to again look through all the weapons look through all the all the um items and stuff the equipment because i just think it keeps changing i just think it keeps changing and they have a new one um gambeson armor i don't know what this is but apparently it's very popular in fantasy stuff and i just didn't know what it was Spencer Stark brought it up and there was immediately like I swear I could feel the like uptick in like engagement people were like finally some more gambeson and I was like I've never heard this word before I'm gonna have to look it up I don't know um but anyway uh it's basically bare bones it's the lowest one it's a plus one to evasion it's not a lot at all the base score is two sheep Justin says sheep spud nugget in chat sheepskin slash thick clothing I think mandatory fun time says it's like padded armor I believe I think it's what archers used see this proves it immediately we have like not a lot of people in chat and just immediately people are like oh yeah of course gambeson I'm like guys I've read so many books I don't know this at all but thank you guys thank you mandatory fun time thank you spud nugget I really appreciate it so Anyway, people were really excited to see that. We love it when people are excited. We, we love it. Get hyped. Get, Get hyped. hyped. Get that hype. Get that hype moment. Almost bought some for Renfest. I want to go to Renfest again so badly. Apparently in California, uh, it's spring or summer Renfest. And interesting. Uh, in Texas, it has to be fall. And that's when I love it. So I don't know. Um, but anyway. Um, okay. So I do want to talk about... I don't know why I did that. I do want to talk about minor health thresholds. And again, this is another one of those things that I was like, Ugh, I hate it. Why would they do that? And then they gave a really good argument on the stream and I was like, touche. Like it was, it was good. Um, so remember in 1.2, minor thresholds across the board were wild, right? They, they, they were, all kinds of things and the idea was that if i make an attack and it bypasses your evasion then 
I roll for damage, and then you are going to take whatever that falls into. So let me go ahead and pull up kind of a character sheet to kind of show that really briefly for those of you who just aren't as familiar. Here, this is the bard. Uh, the evasion starts at line nine. Let's just say it's nine. If I roll 10, we're into the territory that I get to roll damage. If I roll damage and I have a two, well, that is in the minor category. So they would mark one hit point off. That's how it works. In 1.2, these were lower, okay? These, or sorry, these were higher. They weren't mm -hmm. always yeah. one. And if you rolled under that minor damage threshold, they would mark a stress. But then in 1.3, they decoupled the stress from the health. It was no longer coupled. And so they reset, I think, all of them at level 1 to 1. Like, Guardian Amen. had a way, I know, to increase it to 2, which I was like, oh, I guess that 1 condition is fine. But stress was decoupled. All minor was at 1. They have, it's a third change, and it's not the same. It's not a revert. Now, they're all different again. And again, I really have to recommend to people, check out the updated sheets page because it just has everything. Like in this case, I could scroll right down and I'm going to see, oh, by the way, look, uh, your, your, um, something is here. I don't know what this is. I'm moving away from this. Um, your druid, right? Druids, ah, oh, man, it's one. I need a different one. I'll keep going. Beast form. No, I know that that changed. Guardian. Here we go. Here's one. They start at three now, okay? But it's still decoupled. The stress is not connected. And it does mean that when I roll and I hit your evasion and you take damage, if it's less than three, you take no damage. Do you see why I was upset? How do you feel about I mean, it? I think that uh, as a DM, if you hit, you want to hit. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, as a player, if I hit, I want to hit. Yeah. Like, so it is a very interesting concept. I, I guess I can see the reasoning for certain classes. Um, well, you you speak to that. And let's see if you give the same. Don't look at his chat. Don't look. Don't you look. Don't you cheat right now. You I was, give, I was, <laughs> there's a, yeah. The answer is in chat. You give me your feeling. And then I'm going to tell you if it's the reason that Spencer Stark and Matt Mercer gave. You tell me why you think that sometimes this is okay. Well, like, I, I feel like it's like a, a specifically as a guardian, like uh -huh. as like a tank or like even as like, because I think it affected warriors as well, right? Because those, those are like our fighters. Mm -hmm. um, those guys are like trained in combat. They know how to take a hit. So yeah. like, even if they even if they take a hit, they're more likely to be able to take that brunt, roll it off in a way that yeah. my character is a ranger. Like they, you know, aren't really fighting in front or doing that kind of stuff. You're cutting out. Um, okay. <laughs> Dynamic. Uh, but my character as like a ranger, you don't have to worry about always being up front and having that fight attack. So they wouldn't be trained in like that kind of stuff. Yeah. You're spot on. That is exactly the reason that they gave. And again, to reiterate, mandatory fun time, you are 100% right. As a tank, it feels awesome. I admittedly, I don't play tanks very, I, I don't think I've ever played a tank. I've played paladins, but they're not exactly full tank. Not in D&D, &D, you know? Um, I, and you said you're playing a guardian fearbulg. That makes total sense here. So to re-rhyme, the whole thing here is that my point in every previous talk that we've had is that it feels bad to me as a GM that I hit you and now you just get to walk away unscathed and so I walked into that chat and I was ready to be like guys I don't like it it's not a good solution and then they said the thing of like they didn't say it this way but I heard it as a call to action for my own headspace of like Think of your players. Think of how good it feels if you have chosen to be a guardian, if you have chosen to be a warrior. You mm. have chosen that to be the protector that takes hits and keeps going. And sometimes it's rare, right? The guardian, it's still three. I would have to get like a two or lower, you know? Yeah. So it, but, but in that moment, and they can just say like your bigger monsters are always going to have an add to damage too. So yeah. like, so it, it, it makes it your weaker monsters that would, 
you know, hit, but not hit. Yeah. And so I, I get it. I, again, I am, I am the kind of person, I am very critical of things that I initially hear, but I can be reasoned with. And Mm -hmm. I just, I love that every step of the way, not only did they speak to what the change was, but they gave the reason for that change. And even a person like myself who came in with my own preconceived notions, I was like, Wow. Super cool. Mandatory fun time. What did he say? I, I've played a uh, Minotaur before. Give me the like comment. In D&D. Sorry. Um, loved to playing as, uh, or loved the fear bow calm as a guardian who rages. Said and tries not did. to for uh, for mm-hmm. RP. They added a charge ability to it now, which is awesome since I'm RPing a Minotaur fear bow. <gasps> That's so cool. Yeah. A Minotaur? F- oh my gosh. Also, I hope that I don't hope it's okay that I say fear bulgs. I know some people say fear bulg. <laughs> Am I saying it the way that other people say it? Fear bulg? Fear bulg. I, I say fear bulg. Okay, great. Um, also, Kayla does love fear bulgs, which is hilarious to me because she hates cows. Not, no, she doesn't yeah. hate cows. She's very, she, at least when we were growing up, Kayla, for those she of you who don't cows. know, is my best friend. She was afraid of cows. Um, she says, oh my gosh, that's so cool. He's trying to control his anger. Very cute. The little, wow, fear bulb. Oh no, I have to I have to stop looking at her chat because now she's upset with me for revealing her deep, deepest, darkest secrets. Um, but it is true though. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, but anyway, so this is the point. Minor health thresholds across the board um, have been adjusted where they felt is necessary, especially for making tanks feel like tanks. I think it's beautiful. I'm into it. I want to see how it feels because I'm worried that it's going to... It's good. They do... <laughs> yeah. I'm spilling your secrets, and yet here you are in chat. They kill more people than <laughs> sharks, huh? Where's the kit? Where's the article about them eating people? I know it's coming. Anyway, like, so they're growing teeth or something. I digress. Anyway, we got to keep the show going. So, <laughs> minor thresholds changed. Yeah, so, yeah. All right. Which so, I think is a good. I think I think that was a good change. Yeah. So the cat's out of the bag. <laughs> anyway. All right, so um, they did take a moment to talk about three specific classes that shifted, and so we're going to talk about it, especially because, listen up, girly pop in chat, my best friend, my sweet girly, um, your bard, she changed again, but in the best way possible, and I already told you about it in the Discord, which is that your rally has changed. By the way, guys, we're still on a satanic panic system. Don't get too sad. We it's still, only the Ridge Boys that lost it. Uh, yeah, it's only like, the Ridge Boys. Yeah, the rest of us, we still got six and six and six. It's a good time. Um, but sorry. Um, so Be excited. So, uh, however, when we go down, we can see that your rally ability has changed. I think it's in a different place. No, no, here it is. Okay, so. Once per session, describe how you rally the party as they head into the fray, then give yourself and each of your allies a D6 rally die. This has not been updated. Anyone with it once per session as they head into the fray. I think that this is, I think this has changed. I need to clarify what's happening here, okay? Because the intent reads a little bit differently than this makes me think, okay? I'll finish it and then I'll clarify. Anyone with a rally die can spend it to roll it, adding the result to an action roll, reaction roll, damage roll, or clearing stress equal to the rally die result. At the end of each session, they're cleared. Uh, You distribute it at level five, it increases to 1d8. Okay. This still to me is reading like it's supposed to be heading into the combat. That's not what it is. That's not what it is at all anymore, okay? Once per session, it, it's it's untethered to the action tracker entirely, okay? Uh, now, maybe I will get some clarification that disrupts this, but there's a reason that I feel specifically that I am correct, which is that they gave the example of what if you are going into a high priority, listen up, Kayla, dinner party scene you're a royal you're a royal and a bard it's very possible you're gonna bring these dirty boys i don't mean that in a sexy way i mean that in a y'all have dirt on you uh not no not Ted. you're wrong not Ted you're is wrong. very clean yeah yeah you know very, it's just I, jimbo well it's just jimbo it's just anyway the point stands you're heading maybe in- tank a little bit 
Yeah, I don't know about Tank. He's very well groomed, you know, the comb. Yeah, very well groomed. He's probably know. just a, a little swift. The point is, if you're heading <laughs> into a dinner party scene and you know it's going to be a really critical item or something, something that's happening there at that dinner, you get to then tell everybody, hey, you know what? While you're at the dinner, remember that this one is your salad fork and this one, you know, a pretty woman moment where you get taught what the correct etiquette is and then use that as your rally so that they have the D6s. You're not going into combat. There's not going to be the action tracker. You get to just rally when you want. And Spencer Stark mentioned specifically, he said it. I wrote it down. The game is not all about combat. It's about combat, but it's also about RP. And to tell, to make a bard character, kind of the antithesis of a combat-oriented person, to tell that person, your biggest feature is only tied to combat. combat. It's wild. Wild. So... I, and I understood the point of it. It gets very easy for us always to think about abilities in the context of combat. Right. So much more than that. Love it. Into it. No questions. Um, yeah. So also, sorry, Justin. I know that that woe is about me calling Jimbo, you know, a, a dirt covered orphan. But no, he's not. He's not an orphan at all. He has I was going to say, he's not an orphan. No. Um, just dirty. Uh, but, but it's, yeah. So, um, and Kayla says, too busy looking up all the yeah. articles on cow-related deaths to, to listen. Get back here. I'm bringing you back into the fold. Listen up. Like, like, Justin, it's for protection. It very much is. It has, it did save you from that hit from Bruni. So. Did not save him from death. Yeah. Oh. It, I mean, something <laughs> did. <laughs> like, like, all right. Um, I don't know what this is. Oh, it's the multi-class page. Okay, okay, okay. I don't really look at the multi-class pages, but great. Fantastic. Anyway, the other there there are two others that they talk about. One I'm going to bypass because, or I'm just going to talk about these briefly. Uh, I'm not going to bypass any of it because the people who want to watch this are the people who are going to be impacted the most. We have to talk about it. One of them yeah, is we can't true. just talk about our stuff. I yeah. know. I want to, but no kidding. I know. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Druid. So, this one was a little bit difficult for me to follow because we don't have any Druids in our party. But it sounds like, and surprise, surprise, Druids are probably the most complicated class in the game. Because they have so many things going on. As an example of that... When do you use your beast forms and your spells? Do they combine together? Do they uncouple? You know that that has long been a question in D&D. It's always a point of contention. There are questions at table. I guess they're having some of that issue here in this system as well because they've updated the druid and what i got from what they said was that it's more usable with spells but they did have a call to action for druids um you look crazy steven what are you doing with your face <laughs> oh, i was just pulling on it <laughs> Just pulling on it. They had a call to action for their players that was like, hey, druids in the world, could you, we really need more feedback from druids. So when one of y'all takes the reins for GMing, and I don't know if that'll be inside of our main or inside of a secondary something, I'm going to take a druid. I'm going to be a druid. I've decided as part of this. Ooh, I will help. Don't you guys worry. I will help. I'm going to be a mixed media. No, I'm going to be something. Um. Okay, so Druid is different. Let's take a look at their, uh, just very briefly, I'll scroll through for anybody who is using a Druid. You know, your minors at 1, 7, and 14 are your major and severe. Uh, looks like you still have 666. Six, six. Evasion is 8. Um, we haven't talked a lot about <laughs> the gold, but just FYI, handfuls and bags. We're back, baby. <laughs> the individual coins. Y'all shopped just in time. Y'all spent y'all's gold just in time. Those little coins no longer there. Um, but there is a joke going on. Steven, the goal is great. The <laughs> goal. Um, there are a lot of jokes, though, now that you got to spend it before you get robbed. You're absolutely right, Justin. Also, damn right. 
Mandatory fun time is giving you a pass for the face following. He said, uh, I do the same thing. It's what intellectual men do when pondering the complexities of the world. Ooh, yes. Yeah, it is. You're right. Why don't y'all right. have I, I, a couple of cigars in the smoking room, gents? All yeah, right. Maybe a, a nice fine glass. Of, it's, I mean, it's something. hard to argue when you look so dapper, you know? It's like, ah. you do look like a fancy gentleman that knows how to uh, intellectually ponder. Um, okay. Though, I, I, I do, <laughs> do want to note about the gold before we move to Drew and stuff mm -hmm. specifically. There's a joke that's happening now. They, they kind of have an optional rule of you can have just coins in the world and you can add them to your game if you want. But coins now are just something you can use. You want to buy someone a, a shot. Great. Um, somebody made the joke, tipping is a free action in chat. <laughs> Somebody also made a joke of like, oh, thank God, you can still toss a coin to your witcher instead of tossing a handful to your witcher. Like, head of a, I made the joke after that in the back to that person that was like, toss a concussion to your witcher. <laughs> like, <laughs> so, um, but yeah, so gold is different, guys. Um, honestly, we'll talk. For my players, if you had regular coins that were anything that wasn't a handful just give yourself one more handful i don't want to do math i hate math just cool. take it, take one more handful if you didn't have any unique coins don't but i think y'all have did. five great take a handful i'm just not doing it um druids guys coming back to you guys wild touch you can perform harmless subtle effects that involve nature at will uh this has not changed i love this i still think this is beautiful i will be doing it all of the time beast form Mark a stress to transform into a magical creature of your level or lower from the beast form list, which, yes, is in the character sheets. While transformed, you can't use your equipment or cast any spells, but you gain the features, attack trait, and armor score of the creature. You can drop out of this form at any time. When you mark your last hit point or stress point, this form automatically drops. So, it's, you know, it's similar. Um, I think it's probably going to be the domains that had some switches. I think the idea is that maybe you still use some of those domains um but anyway uh also for those of you who are playing druids i've seen some questions about this where are all of these creatures they're in the character sheet everybody gotta get the papers um all right okay so moving on to guardian the notes that i took on this one was that unstoppable you now tick up instead of down i didn't have a guardian uh, i built one but i don't know what it was but it's it's specific to the feature so we're going to take a look at that unstoppable once per long rest you can become unstoppable you gain an unstoppable to unstoppable die which begins as a d4 Place it on the spot to the right, which there's a little circle right there. It's very cute, a little circle. Uh, starting with the one value facing up. Whenever you deal one or more hit points to an adversary, increase the unstoppable die value by one. When you increase the value above the die's highest number, which would be, in this case, above a four, or when the scene ends, remove the die and drop out of unstoppable. I do remember this. This makes sense that it's like up instead of down. Mm -hmm. Okay, because people... Okay, got it. At level 3, upgrade your unstoppable die to a d6, and then it's a d8. You gain resistance to physical damage. Add the current value of the unstoppable die to your damage dice total. Increase your ace armor score, not AC. Armor score by your proficiency. Can't be restrained or vulnerable. Remember, guys, this is why I said that this is the class that is more barbarian to me, because this mm -hmm. feels like a rage, you know? Uh, Mandatory Fun Time says yes, because you're playing the Fear Ball Guardian. That's right. This is great. Mandatory, would you... How do you feel about this? Do you like this change? Does it feel, yeah. like, significant? And positive, I guess, you know? We'll yeah, keep talking, I mean, Stephen, because there's a delay. For sure. But... Yeah, I, I I feel like it would be huge. Just, like, being able to, like, uh, that, that, like build up, because it is still, like, it just, like, going from, like, one, two, three, four. Uh, I think it would confuse new players. Again, the simplicity of helping new players get into this is, like, make it as easy as possible why do a countdown when we can do a count up yeah i, I yeah I, I i really can't speak very intelligently about the change here but i do think this this is nice um you know i i liked it before too but we'll if we get some feedback from mandatory we'll kind of clarify it here in chat but i think that's great um 
Okay, um, so that gets through those. Oh, here we go. Love it. Yeah. It made sense when they explained how if they wanted it to go up, so the last hit is going to be more powerful than the first. For RP, that's sick. Oh. Oh. Okay, I see. All right. Let me explain how it. they wanted it to go up, so the last hit is going to be more powerful than the first. Yeah, okay, so it's scaling upwards. I could see how, like, if it was the reverse back in the other way, then it was, like, getting weaker the longer you ran it. This does feel good. I like that. Yeah, plus, like, you get to save your, you know, as the combat is going to progress, obviously near the tail end is where it's going to get, you know, thicker and scarier you want to right. save that last blow and then maybe you're down to just the 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 big bad and you can just come in with one final blow justin says you got to warm up you do you know it stretches more tense says mandatory fun time yeah um okay great thank you so much that was really really helpful yeah yep love okay. that we have people in the audience that can help us answer some of these questions that we don't currently have answers for we don't have answers for it yeah um, if, I was, if I was talking D and D, I played like every single every you know, class. class. What yeah. class? Played? Warlock. I Wild. Warlock. One of my favorites. Hate it. Squishy. <laughs> I've played like Squishy, three, not enough spells. maybe four. Mm, you're wrong. <laughs> okay. Well, moving forward. Moving forward. Moving okay. Forward. Yeah. Yeah. This uh, isn't that. Okay. 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 Um, so, <clears throat> so I'm, I'm gonna have to look about... at my. I'm gonna have to look at my sheet because my companion sheet updated. Apparently. I, I heard that, actually. I did, yeah. Um, okay, I want to note, so, you know, we're we're about an hour in. I think we could go for another yes. 20, 25 minutes. I think that's fine. Our, yeah, I'm fine with know. that. Okay, great. So we won't, you know, we're not going to stay on a two ton. I do want to make a note because this has been such a big discussion of, like, unarmored, armored, what is Spud Nugget asking? Have y'all talked about leveling up changes yet or saving that for later? You know what? We could do that right now. Um, yeah, let's talk about it. Because it's a good one. Uh, it's the proficiency. Guys, you remember how everybody was like, it just doesn't make sense that I have to choose proficiency. Remember Kayla when I said, hey, we're leveling up. I know that you're new. I would suggest level your proficiency to stay combative or to, or to stay um, effective in combat. Mm -hmm. You don't have to choose it anymore. You just get it. Um, so at levels two through four, take an additional you can. experience. You can choose it. You, you Sorry. Sorry. That's a... Can you? I, I'm pretty sure you can still add it as one of your... Because you increase your proficiency, but is it not one of the choices? No, anymore? because it's automatic. That's the whole ah. point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's that's the whole point. Is it is automatic? Oh, it's in the fives that you can do it. Okay. okay. Oh, okay. I see. Okay. Can you? So you ah, there we go. At five through seven, you do you can do it further. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. But basically, you know, now it is by default you're gonna get some of this information and oh, okay i noticed that too spud nugget that's why i was saying that nobody think the demi plane got it wrong please let's hold judgment off because remember i said this at the very top Darrington Press was seeing areas where they updated it and areas where they didn't okay so it's i don't know which one is right they kept releasing ghost revisions today so i don't know which uh -huh. is right let's give it a day to settle y'all look at it tomorrow and then figure it out i'll be but very critical tomorrow very critical <laughs> tomorrow and then let let spencer stark and matt mercer tell you that they are right and they're right they're just wherever it is um but anyway that was some communication was that it was a little weird but i love this change you are going to stay effective by default throughout the entire game. Yes, you can become more effective depending on your selections, right? But nobody is going to have the option of walking into combat as a level 10 character and still swinging with 1d6 damage. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I thought it was fun. I was like, oh, you know, you could just be the shop girl. Did I also think, wow, you're just going to get wrecked? Yes, I yeah. do. Um, but yeah, so it is It is interesting. Uh, I love the for show, for shows. We got some for shows in there. Uh, but yeah, so yeah. happens at level two. This is one of the debates about places that it may or may not have changed. Sometimes it says at seven. Sometimes it says at eight. Not very clear. But um, and then, you know, again, uh, I think it's at level five and I think it's at level eight. But um, yeah, that's what mine says. 
Yeah, but there's just confusion. There's people were confused about it. There was, there were people in the Discord, everything short of throwing like cafeteria food at each other. They were like, I'm looking at it right here. And the other person was like, me too, you scallywag. It wasn't like that. It was very respectful. But people were like, I'm looking at it. I'm also looking at it. It's different. That's how we knew about the ghost revisions. So, um, great point, Spud Nugget. Um, okay. Another thing that has been talked about a lot is unarmored. Um, it's just it just keeps coming up, you guys. This unarmored thing is wild to me. I need it to drop. People, I don't yeah, care about it. Love to be unarmored, though, Rachel. I know, I know. And, and like, look at how tough I am. My bare chest is my armor. Yeah. Can I explain why I don't care about it? Is is that? <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. I want to know. <laughs> I, okay, I don't want to say that I don't care about being unarmored or the role play of being unarmored. I love that. I love that monks don't wear armor. I love that barbarians uh -huh. don't wear armor. But can we talk about why we give a shit? Which is that in just put on some gambeson. <laughs> <says he's right. laughs> Wrong. This is but, not wrong. He's not wrong, but this is the point, okay? When you get obsessed about the concept of being unarmored, what you're saying is the only tabletop RPG that I care about is Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition because the whole reason is that they built a game where evasion didn't exist. They built armor class. Well, if the only thing that makes you hit or not hit someone is the armor class, you have to wear armor. So then yeah, yeah. to make someone not wear armor, they had to come up with a thing called unarmored because they couldn't have someone get a boost from being that class and get a boost from wearing armor. So they had to say, if you don't wear armor, only do you get this. Daggerheart doesn't deal with that because it doesn't have the same kind of armor class. And if you're like, yeah, but I still have to select full plate. Sure, but it's all meant to be... F I, I really need to take my tone back. I get it, guys. We all love the things we love. I'm sorry. But my whole point is that... I'm just so upset by it. I'm just so upset by it. Because they say it right there. They're like, hey, guys, if you want to play a wizard, yeah, you might choose to have the armor slots related to half plate or whatever. But, yeah, it's silly that your wizard is walking around clink, clink, clink. Don't do that. Instead, pr you still take the mechanical value of the armor, but instead uh -huh. it's fireflies or an orb around you. The first hit right. cracks it. Flavor it however you want. If you want to be a big, naky baby, be a big, naky baby. Nobody cares. Say it however <laughs> you want. This is why I feel like I purged some evil. I'm so... I'm glad that you did. I was, I was here for it. I was here for it the whole bit. Do you disagree? Am I talking no, crazy? No, no, Do I need to no. cut this from the YouTube edit? <laughs> Not at all. I think that it is a silly thing to be like uh, so concerned about like what changes if I don't have armor on. I feel like I need someone in chat to tell me if I'm crazy. Please let me know. If, if, if you really feel invested in it and I need to just walk this all back, let me know. I'm willing to, but I keep telling people, I keep reminding people of the we like. We need arguments. We need it. arguments. You know? Yeah, flavor it. Just to say, go for the throat. Oh, <laughs> shit. All right. Like, uh, but yeah, why is his color different now? Do you see I don't that know. Too? Was... I did, I did. Twist so, the dagger. Uh... Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. Yeah, because I just, I don't, I, I just, anyway, we're moving on. But, but to the point, for, for people who loved Unarmored, apparently Gambeson is one of those things that people like because it, it's kind of like that thing. You're not crazy. Thank you, Squire. Okay. <sighs> I feel validated. <sighs> oh, my God. Anyway, no, I'm not. But <laughs> Unarmored. <laughs> Golden guns. I feel like Spencer Stark and, and Matt Mercer have also been getting this question. I don't, but because of two things, they brought it up today, not a lot, but they did talk about the fact that Gambeson is now there. So apparently that's very big for you guys. I don't know what Gambeson is until today, but it's cool. I like it. Uh, but the other one is they brought up a domain specifically, which is bare bones, um, which introduces basically that. Now, I don't have the card in front of me, but I know that it's, I think it's in the bone domain maybe. Um, but, uh, you know, there there is that for people to, it's not going to be in the bard. Why am I looking in the bard? Anyway, 
there's a bare bones one that is meant to provide kind of additional communication if you wanted to play like a monk or if you wanted to play a barbarian there you go guys you can do it without having to rely on the the concept of armor you know but i really would invite you guys to remember that this is all imagination station you can yeah, as long as you're working with your DM. GM you can... Dagger Master. DM is Dagger always Master. Dagger Master for a reminder, Dagger guys. Dagger Master for That's a reminder. Right. We're, we're, there's no dungeons. There's no Daggers. dungeons. Where's Daggers? Dagger, Dagger, Dagger. Dagger, Dagger, Dagger. Uh, Dagger, Dagger, Dagger. Uh, but yeah, no, just work with your DM. If you have a cool idea, yeah, you there should be no reason to be afraid to go to your DM to be like, hey. Yeah. Me and Rachel had a private conversation the other day she called me she was like i want to know some more stuff about your character and we talked for what 30 minutes 40 minutes yeah came up it was a great call yeah yeah we did all kinds of fun stuff it is just like working you should work in tangent with your yes yes you should work in tangent with your dm yeah this is a game about communication and bonding you know if you Mm want to be a guardian say that you're mechanically taking the, the the heaviest armor that you want and say when i was growing up they scorched our skin and now we're scarred so fully that i don't take damage the same way and that works you know go off um Okay, we are we are uh, we have about eighteen minutes left. I want to see other stuff. Oh, I do want to introduce this very briefly. In chapter five, they now have a. Uh, I don't know that it's chapter five. Spencer Stark was talking off the top of his head, but I he's probably right. Um, one shot builder. They have a one shot builder, and it's like a build your own adventure. Apparently, I haven't looked at it, but it's like. What is the the hook that you find to be interesting? Did you guys? Was the queen attacked last night, or what is happening, Stephen? Who are you? Like, how do you? Uh, Madlib. So <laughs> Look at our screen, bottom right corner. Our screen, Ashley Monk Yeah, what, what is that? It's you know, guys. I am still getting used to like Streamlabs and stuff, and I think it's our last subscriber. <laughs> Hey, that's I was wondering because that's my coworker. Um, <laughs> uh, thanks, Ashley. <laughs> yeah, thanks for thanks for subscribing. We love you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I don't know who that was. Love you. You're the best. All right. Um, yeah. It is. It is like Mad Lib. Okay. It's also like. Um, <laughs> It's also like, what's it called? Uh, build your own adventure. Those like story picture books that are like, tee, 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 tee. Uh, Ashley is the real MVP. Absolutely. Um, so I-, I-, I love this. I think it is so cool. I love Chris and I were talking about this the other day. Darrington Press seems like they're in the business of building stories and they let mechanics be the avenue for stories to be told. Other systems, I think, want mechanics and they have stories as the avenue to showcase mechanics. I love this. Um, You guys have heard me talk about For the Queen, a new game that's coming out in May this month from Darrington Press. It is a fantastic game. Um, I have seen it played and I'm very excited to get it. Um, But For the Queen is also one of those adventures where it's like, hey, you draw a card, tell me what this means to you. They're building stories. That's what that one shot builder is about. I'll move on, but I'm excited about it. Um, That's exciting. Yeah. They also gave a lot of feedback for GMs uh, as part of their question answer portion. But this brings me to uh, chat. Before I move on to my chaos discussion, is there anything else that y'all really wanted to talk about today that was in part of the the dialogue? I think that that's a lot of the big ones. I mean, yeah, I, I I haven't had a good chance to dig my teeth into it, so I can't say for sure. But I mean, all of that seems major. I know that. Um, I know that. Velocidad, Dad, we miss you. You're not here right now, but I know. But he was the one who clarified the downtime stuff to us. It clearly was confusing other people as well because they did clarify that you can use the same downtime move twice. So it was happening to other people. Um, oh, you know what? The modified attack of opportunity. Uh, oh that's, yeah, for the for the warrior. Yeah, I actually already did talk about that with Chris, and it looks good. I think we were into it. Um, And remember, guys, the updated page shows all of the updated pages. Warrior, here we go. Class feature. And mandatory fun time. We had mentioned it at the beginning of the stream. 
it just hasn't released yet, but mm-hmm. they said what the, the new one was They're, this week sometime? I don't know if it's this week. I know that Spencer Stark said that they are working on it That's this right. week. That's what you said. And that yeah. they're play testing it this week and they're driving towards getting it out. I also know this um, because remember, I am going to be running games at Gen Con. And I was like, oh, we're probably playing the Sablewood Messengers. Uh-uh, because now the events are posted for what's happening at Gen Con. Oh. And it is the adventures, the Marauders of Windfall, I think. <laughs> Asterisk. I think that's what it's called. Um, and that is what it is called that is coming out. So that's the adventure that's going to be played at Gen Con. Um, so yeah, should be soon mandatory. And I am so desperately awaiting it because I want to know what I'm running. You know what I mean? Like I got I to gotta figure it out. Um, anyway, attack of opportunity. If an adversary attempts to leave your melee range, make an agility reaction roll against their difficulty. I think that's the change when I was talking to Chris. I think before it was just you got to choose one effect. Now you have to do the agility reaction, I think. I could be wrong. Um, but you choose one effect on a successful roll, two on a critical. So you have the keep them from moving, deal primary damage, or move alongside them. Um yeah, so oh, that's cool. Yeah, I think it was the agility reaction. But... I I like the move alongside them. That's a super cool idea for like a, a cool? like an opportunity attack. Is like, you do you know what running, I thought immediately? Why would you not chase them? Do you like, want to hear what immediately? I need to explain the thing that popped into my head immediately the first time I saw this. You know those scenes in movies where somebody tries to escape on horseback. Uh huh. Grab mm-hmm. onto the horse, pull yourself up with them. Yeah. Cinematic. <gasps> I want Beautiful. it to happen. My brain is excited. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. <laughs> so we have 12 minutes left. So I have to talk right, about the thing. Okay. Let's hear the chaos. Here we go, guys. All right. So I was, I'll be honest. I was a little bummed about like some of the things. The Wanderborn specifically. I love the Nomadic Pack. I did really like, though, at the beginning, every time Chris, as a Wanderborn fairy, he was getting to choose his thing randomly, right? It was cool. I was learning more rules that way. He was learning more rules that way. But also, when we were talking, Justin, when we were talking about, hey, players that have the same domains, maybe they can switch between hands. And we found out that is not true. But I was thinking afterwards, and I was like i haven't seen this group so excited about something since then i was like that maybe they should talk about that because maybe it's something that you want to sit down with people playing certain things it increases dynamics because you can kind of be like only while we're sitting together you can pay the stress to use my card if you share the domain i think that's a cool idea it's been spinning in my head a lot And they brought up something in the stream that was like, we're looking for ways that like GMs might be able to like take a domain card out of play for a session or something. And I, and it, it just brought this all burbling to the top of my head. And I submitted a question. Um, I would like to put in quotes here that Spencer Stark said, Ooh, good question. (laughs) All right. So my question was, uh, um, As it becomes clearer, you're pulling from multiple rubrics for a mixed media system. Can we expect some fun dynamics for the card interplay for the GM that motivates card goblins like myself? They got really excited about this question and Spencer Stark looked off screen and he was like, can I, can I tease something? And apparently the producers were like, yeah. And he was like, we're already talking about that. They were like, we have to keep it kind of quiet, but this is an exciting thing. And now you guys, anybody who watches this in t- here in t- on Twitch, on the YouTube, this is just between us girlies, okay? We're not spreading this. Matt said it's a secret, so you can't go tell me. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, <laughs> but, uh, but anyway, um, he said, oh, I'm so, I'm so excited. He said that he's working on, kind of inspired by campaign three with Ashton. This is not a big spoiler for those of you who know. Yes, Justin, that was me. Um, For those of you who know, in campaign three, they have a barbarian who kind of has chaos type of energy. And some days he has like a gravitational pull and some days there's all kinds of stuff. That was an idea from, from Matt. Also, it reminds me of the Wanderborn thing. It also reminds me of chaos magic that sorcerers use in D&D. He said, oh, and it reminds me of the deck of many things. Matt is trying to put together a chaos deck. 
that is going to be something that is going to basically randomize whatever you have. And I don't know if it's per session, I don't know if it's for character build, but it's just gonna be kind of the wanderborn concept where you pick your community at the start of the day. You pick maybe your weapon at the start of the day. Your domain cards, all random. Oh my God, I'm so excited. I want this game to be something where you can trade cards, make it fun. Give, give me a reason to wear a belt with a little clip-on card thing. I need it. Don't you laugh at me, Steven. <laughs> I wasn't laughing. No one laughed. No one laughed. <laughs> like Chaos Rain, he's got a little raccoon. Justin does. Um, I'm very excited about it. I don't know if I'm the only one. I love the deck of many things, but it's always been too scary for me to use. It is a scary item. I can't use it. It can ruin your whole um, campaign. Me and Justin have tormented dms in the past with that item never me um <laughs> r d exactly squire says i like r d attributes like ashton has yeah random number you know, gen randomly generated i don't know what r d stands for but i know what you mean yes random stuff it's cool it's fun it's engaging it's interesting it's dynamic i have a lot of adjectives that i could use for it um it's fun <laughs> um spun i guess says we all want to walk around and pretend we're playing Yu Gi Oh. we absolutely do especially you guys i was the different kind of nerd when i was a kid like so i didn't play pokemans i don't know any of them and i want to kayla had them i got to look at that Ponita one, I loved it. It was cool, but I never got to have it. Anyway, he also did, you know, um, as we're kind of closing out and stuff, I know we're down to the last few minutes. Matt and Spencer did say, like, thank you to all the people that are playing actual plays and that they've seen a lot of them. In my own head, I like to think maybe they've seen us, you know? It'd be lovely. I don't know. If y'all are here and y'all are watching this, I really love the thing that y'all are doing. Thank you so yeah, much. Yeah, it's fantastic. You're, You're doing a great job. Yeah, you know, like the whole group, Spencer and Rowan and I think Michael and Alex Teplitz and God, everyone. Sean, who's peoples. the artist, Matt Mercer. Y'all are fantastic. I, I adore you. I love what y'all are doing. <sighs> Anything? I also liked one of our tweets. Oh, he did. Yeah. The... <laughs> oh, my God, you guys. I tweeted the map that we built during our last session, and he liked it. And I, like, I I called Steven immediately. I was like. I was driving, so I had to contain myself all the way until I got home. And then I walked in the door, and I was like, wife that doesn't care about this, <laughs> listen to what I have to tell you. Yeah. We were so excited. She was like, good job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it was it was very exciting for me. And and it really is just it's just the love of what they do. Yeah. You know. They're so cool. Like it, like the idea that like maybe if we hadn't seen Critical Role those year all those years ago, we might not even be talking like we are right now. No. No, everything built into the lore of who I am as a person, who our what our friendship is based on. And it's just, you know, you do it for the love of the game, the love of the experience. Yeah. It was a great. It's and and now the fact that we get to be here building something as part of that. I'm just having I have I have so many feelings. Um but yeah, he did say, you know, they said thank you, both Spencer and Matt. Thank you to the actual play people. And I want to thank some of you guys, too. If y'all are watching this, because I know we all watch each other's stuff, the Wither and Bloom group, you know, Todd over there, I love y'all. I'm the person who keeps calling Olivia Girly Pop. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> I just am bad with names. I'm trying to remember it's Olivia. Um, for the Rolling Solo, you know, I know you're playing Dagger Heart. That's Velocidad. I love that. Um, I love the Rolling Role play relay group you know everybody y'all are doing such good things i'm trying to watch as much as i can thank y'all for being part of this and um yeah mandatory fun time says uh yeah for sure i had just left the usmc and found them streaming campaign one me too i fell in love and then became a forever dm that was me that was my whole experience it was 2015 i went up to steven said hey if I learned how to do the DM thing for Dungeons and Dragons, would you play it with me? I was like, yeah. 
I was like, we will. Yeah, and we do. <laughs> and we do. Yeah, so. Um, yeah. He did also say, you know, they mentioned not to feel obligated to go to the new versions. Like, if you have a game the next day and they said, oh, they're sorry if that was an intended pressure. And I would like to say, we're doing it. Spencer Stark, Matthew Mercer. Every time. Don't you worry. We're on it. The new stuff, we'll run it into the ground for you. That's exactly right. Don't threaten us with a good time. <laughs> so we're here. We are all in. I feel very passionately about this. I like closing out of this, you know, for those of you who haven't heard me say it before, call to action. Play those druids that they need. Play those versions that they need. They asked for more people to really dive into communication about levels four through eight. If we want to like level up some characters just to look at how they scale and stuff. Give them what they need because I want this hobby of ours to be something that lasts a decade longer yeah. you know i want it so get out there yeah play this game yeah y'all gotta do the thing gotta we're gonna do, do the, the thing, thing. y'all gotta watch us do the thing we'll watch you do the thing everyone will be doing the thing it's gonna be a grand time do the hey macarena, macarena. <laughs> <laughs> you got it <laughs> okay i think that's a good place to call it uh, so all right, thank you everybody for joining in chat. It was so great to have you. I know this was last minute and um, yeah, we'll see you guys next week in 1.4. Take care. Hey, and if you haven't already, you know, like, subscribe, follow, do all the things. If there's a bell, hit it. We love if it all. If there's a bell, hit it. Like, I love your marketing corner. It's become my favorite thing. <laughs> I all forgot, right. I was rough. I forgot last night, but we'll get around to it. Yeah, yeah, listen, we'll do it. So, all right, take care guys. Roll for hope, happy adventures, and we'll see you next time. Bye. 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 Bye.